Let's talk about some Dave Matthews Band news. By the way, um, I didn't realize, and, and having been a fan of the band for a really long time, like I know how annoying some of the Dave Matthews Band fans can be, but boy, are they getting up there and crazy. They're getting up there and crazy. I still love the band, and I, I still like a lot of the people, but uh, some of some of them are like, like nuts. Like I thought the Fleetwood Mac people were getting crazy. Uh, but uh, the Dave Matthews Band's fans, they're just, uh, they're on a whole nother level. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the new record and uh, some of the things that we learned as uh, Dave and the rest of the group start to do press uh, for the album. We'll build a little bit more of a story about what to expect with uh, Come Tomorrow, their new record that comes out in early June. But I just want to point out again, for those of you listening, of course, you know you can watch uh, part of the morning show now. Uh, we put up a, a clip every day of a bit of music news that we get. Um, and um, we've been watching the, the videos and we just realized that how just awful the, the studio looked and how it was great for a radio studio, but not so much for video form. And our own Jen, who works here, went and decked out the entire uh, studio. So now we actually kind of have a set and uh, there's really fun stuff to look at behind me. Uh, a lot of album covers, a lot of the stuff that we play here at EHM. There's even some Easter eggs. Um, there's a couple of things that are hidden in here. And there's even some stuff that has a special meaning to it. Uh, where, you know, how the things are arranged. Some stuff that I don't even know if people who work here would get. Uh, but Jen really spent a lot of time on this. And I think it looks beautiful. Uh, so I just want to recognize her uh, at the start of this here. So I want to thank her publicly too. Because of course I didn't thank her publicly yesterday. I just yelled at her. I was like, hurry up. Why isn't this done yet? <clears throat> just trying to play out the whole, uh, you know, morning show, lucid, arrogant, jerk persona. Anyway, uh, let's get back. Speaking of uh, personas, let's get back to Dave. I'm really concerned for Dave's uh, well-being. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I think the pressure of being a rock star for years and years and years can take a toll on somebody. And I think it's really taken a toll on Dave. Uh, in fact, I, I think... And again, I don't know. It's just speculation. But I think that's part of the reason why Boyd kind of like bowed out for a little bit. It's just like the 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 pressure of the whole thing. I'm sure he's got some. I think there's some medical issues there as well. I, I really don't know. I, I really don't know. But the, the headline that I took away from this was, and it's kind of the headline of the piece, although we'll talk about some other things too, is I don't know if Boyd Tinsley's ever coming back to the Dave Matthews Band. It didn't really seem apparent to me that that was something that would happen one day. Now... Judging by the tweet that he first sent out, it seemed like he just needed some time. In fact, when I first read it, this is just my interpretation, so Dave Matthews Band fans, don't don't freak out all over me on the internet, okay? Um, it was just my interpretation that he was bowing out from the tour and that it was just going to be like a, a momentary thing, like they've been touring so much and he just couldn't do it this year, but he'll be back, that kind of thing. Like That was the impression I got from reading the tweet. But after... Um, uh, reading some of the things that Dave said, um, I don't know if he's ever coming back. Um, I don't know, and I can't really get a sense of where the conflict is within the band. I always kind of thought it was between Dave and Leroy, even though they, I, I think they all love each other, but I always kind of thought that was it. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure, and I'm not sure if it wasn't between Dave and Boyd now. I don't really know, but I'm, I'm obsessed with that time around every day in the Lily White sessions when it, it really broke down for the band at first. And uh, I always just kind of wanted to know what happened there. And, and I still, I will never not want to know what happened there and what the, the, the deep down issues were. I know that there's tons of fan theories and this and that and all these other things. And they always kind of like skirted around and told us little tidbits, but nobody really kind of got down to the heart of what the issues were. Same with Fleetwood Mac. I mean, you know, we know some of the issues. Some of them, I think a lot of it we don't know. Uh, but um, it, it's clear to me that some of that stuff is still kind of going on in the group. And I, I thought they were over and past that. The other fascinating thing, um, there's not many bands that I know of, thinking about bands that have recorded for years, like um, Bruce or, uh, you know, I mean, whatever you want to say, whatever group you want to name, Coldplay, where they really don't like the album that they just came out with as much as the Dave Matthews Band. It breaks my heart because I love all their stuff, and it seems like at, at any turn, 
whenever the new record comes out, there's always a comment about how the old record wasn't right or satisfying. And that always kind of breaks my heart a little bit, which makes me kind of get angry at the fans, which is why I have a little contempt for them. I don't know if you could tell. Um, because I feel like they put almost too much pressure on the group, if that makes any sense. You know, like there becomes such an expectation that makes the band kind of run around chasing things like crazy. Like, I just wish they make what makes them happy. And if we like it, great. And if we don't like it, great. You know, uh, same goes for Fleetwood Mac. We were talking about Stevie Nicks. She's like, I don't want to write, make a new music because nobody buys it. Well, who cares? Make it. Because if it means something to 100 people, then uh, you've succeeded. Who cares about sales and stuff like that? I know industry people do. I know a lot of people in the you know the record labels, they're in, they're in everybody's ears, all the artists' ears. But you got to black all that out, especially when you reach the status of a Fleetwood Mac or a Dave Matthews band. Um, Dave was asked uh, what uh, concert he's recently attended. Alt-J. I thought that was pretty interesting. He said he admired how quiet it was at an Alt-J show. I thought that was pretty interesting because it's not really quiet at uh, Dave Matthews Band concerts. Um, he was asked what is the uh, most gratifying thing he's done recently, and he revealed that he's been working with a friend, Anthony Lucero, who wrote a uh, movie. Uh, it's a small film called Halo of the Stars, and he's working on the music for that record, which I found to be pretty interesting. Again, I, I see what Dave is saying here and the relief that I hear in his tone when he talks about working on music for a small film and music that has nothing to do with Dave Matthews. In fact, he commented that he was hoping that uh, Anthony liked what he did and was afraid that he wasn't going to like it because it wasn't Dave Matthews Band stuff. But as it turned out, Anthony was hoping he wasn't going to make Dave Matthews Band music for this little movie about a clown. Uh, so it turned out to be a nice little thing. But you can tell here's a guy who just wants to create stuff without having to worry about what people say about it, which is always the tough part about uh, being in the public eye. Um, he asked he was asked about when something that he created wasn't gratifying. And this was his response. I'm going to read the whole thing for you in quote form. I think sometimes sometimes I spend a lot of my life trying to get answers from people around me instead of listening to myself. But after I turned 50, something happened. I realized that there are more important things than saying, okay. An example is the last album I made, which is fine. It's called Away From The World. I think it was a great album, and then I let people convince me it wasn't finished. I did a disservice to the music. I kept on working on it, and it lost a lot. It's too bad I didn't say, no, you're wrong. The music may be flawed and splintered, but it's genuine. It's done. The new album, I don't know whether it's good or bad, but I managed to say no. People were saying things like, I don't know if we should put this song or that song on the album, and I was able to say, you're wrong, we're leaving it. But I hope I never feel like I've got it right creatively. That probably wouldn't be a good sign. I'm not a therapist, um, but I do have an Italian mother. So I feel like I'm qualified to say there's a lot in that. There's a lot in that phrase right there. There's a lot of angst and anxiety and, again, uh, insecurity and worry about what people think. Um, there's a lot of that stuff in there. So, uh, you know, I, I see some of these stuff. And, again, always appreciative for the brutal honesty. Uh, but um, a little worrisome that things aren't as maybe joyous as uh, some of us would like to think. Um, you know, things may be like, I always kind of assumed over the last couple of years with big whiskey and away from the world that the tough times were past them and, uh, perhaps maybe not, uh, perhaps maybe not. Not that I think that there's like fighting in the band, but I don't, I don't think it's as, as joyous of a thing. Uh, so delving a little bit more into come tomorrow and what we can expect from the uh, record, uh, Dave said it was a bit of what I was saying earlier. I get disheartened thinking, why am I doing this? What the hell does my career mean? I'm grateful, but I am doing it for, but am I doing it for good reasons? Um, I was frustrated with the outcome of the last record, but I had some songs that I'd worked on with Mark Batson, songs with Leroy on them. Uh, they were never finished, and they were sitting there on the shelf. Then I started a record with Rob Cavallo, and I lost my steam with that. Then John Elagia came, 
And we were working together. And finally, I said to him, let's get all the music I made with Batson and Cavallo and whatever it is you and I are doing. And let's see what we have. It was way too much stuff for one album, but we started to chisel away all the while making new music. And here we are. The newest music on the record is only a few months old. And the oldest is from 12 years ago. But I think it's quite an artistic record. It's got love songs to my children, love songs to the planet. There are songs about lust. I think my wonder at the universe is on the record. It's got things that deal with death. It took a long time to make, but I feel good about the result. Uh, again, I love the excitement about the new stuff, but I hate that like there's that feeling. And but I understand. Like he's, I'm not saying he's not. You know, he's not. Uh, he he has a right to feel however he feels. Um, but I just, it's sad to me that he feels sad about it, uh, because I know how happy some of the people are from some of the songs on that record. And, uh, by the way, like much to the people who suggest to me, I, I saw some things that are like, go check out this. The, the people are covering the Dave Matthews band. Like they're a sports team. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. Like they're already critiquing the new album and all we have is the track list in one song. I mean, I know a lot of these songs were played on the road beforehand, but still, I mean, it's kind of crazy. On the subject of Boyd, Dave said, quote, I have a deep love for Boyd. He has to deal with his stuff. In many ways, I'm sure it would have been a lot easier for him to just say, I'm good, let's go play. But you can't just throw yourself away, your wellness away, because you play violin in a band. It doesn't make any sense to do that. Um... He said something else that I found to be interesting on how his Boyd's absence would affect Dave. And Dave said, and I quote here, I'm used to turning to my right and seeing him going bananas. Some days doing it better than other days. You know, there's an idea that genius is something like that comes into a room through a window and into a person rather than lives in a person all the time. Sometimes I'd hear Boyd and I'd be like, holy cow, you are good. Other times I'd be like, clearly today you left the window closed. But besides that point, we're all like that. I have terrible nights. The answer is that I don't know how it's going to be without him there. Are there plans for him to come back? Dave was asked and he said, quote, I can't say I can't wait till he comes back because I don't know what's going to happen. But right now being away is better for him. Nobody is happy about the situation except that we're happy he can figure some stuff out. I hope he does, but I'm going to miss having that whirling dervish Adonis Muppet over there on my right. I know the audience is too, but we can't serve that desire. There's a lot of love, but there's definitely some, right? There's some angst in between. I guess maybe no more than the average family. So that's the latest on Come Tomorrow. And uh, we'll have more as uh, we get a little bit more into uh, this record, which is due out on June 8th. <laughs> 